Hello fellow game developers. Have you been scratching your heads over implementing a digital timer in Unity? Well, look no further. Today we are going to delve into creating a digital timer that counts both up and down in Unity. For this tutorial, we are working with the latest Unity LTS version. If you're using a different version, don't worry. The core concepts we're going over apply universally. The first step is to ensure you have a UI text element on your scene where we can display the timer and also adjust your layout if you want to do the same thing I do, as this is optional. Here's how you create a UI text element. Navigate to Game Object UI Text Text Mesh Pro and it will automatically create the canvas if you don't have one and also the event system required to interact with it. When you do not have Text Mesh Pro installed, then it will ask you to import it. I'll name it Timer Text for this tutorial. Now let's change the default text to 0000 to mimic the format of our upcoming timer. Feel free to adjust the font, color, and size to match your game's aesthetic. If you have a skybox as the background scene, then you can easily change this in the main camera to a solid color. So I'm going to choose black. It's time to make our timer functional. Create a new folder and call it scripts. Let's create a new C sharp script. I'm going to name it timer controller, but you can choose any name you like and open it up. We are using text mesh pro, so we need to use it as a library. At the top, we can add the using TM Pro. Let us write all the variables we will need, and we will make sure all of them are serialized fields just to see them in the inspector and to drag in any references we might need, like the text component we just created. The first variable will be serialized field private float time counter, then serialized field private int minutes, serialized field private int seconds, serialized field, private text mesh pro u GUI timer text. We have our timer text to reference our UI text element, time counter to keep accurate track of time and minutes and seconds to break down our time. In the update method, we're going to increment time counter by time dot delta time. After that, we'll calculate minutes and seconds by casting time counter to an integer and using division and modulus operations. So if you deleted the update and start method like I did, then make sure to just type in update, press enter, and the update method will reappear again with the private void update. So we will start the code by writing time counter plus equal time dot delta time, and then minutes equal math f dot floor to int, and then pass in time counter divide by 60 f. Then on the next line, we will write seconds equal math f dot floor to end time counter minus minutes times 60. Then in the next line, we will write timer text dot text equal string dot format and in brackets, we will use string for the first argument and then pass in semi brackets zero colon zero zero and then and then for the second argument, it will be minutes and the third argument seconds. With this, our timer counts up and displays it in the UI. For the countdown, we'll need another float variable, countdown time, which we'll initialize to the time we want to start the countdown from. We'll decrease the countdown time by time.delta time in the update method and display the remaining time in the UI text element. Underneath time counter, we add serialized field private float countdown timer and give it a default value of 120 float. Also, we need a bool to check which state we are in, the is countdown state or normal counting up state. So we write below in seconds, serialize field, private bool is countdown. Now let's do an if check at the update where we check if is countdown and countdown timer is greater than zero, then we can cut and paste from timer counter up until the end of seconds line inside of the if statement. We then write else if isn't is countdown, then paste the same clipboard. 
we now need to change the time counter to countdown timer and minus equal time dot delta time. Then change inside of minutes the time counter variable to countdown timer as well as inside of seconds. This way our timer counts down from the specified time. And there you have it, a digital timer that counts both up and down in Unity. Now let's go back into Unity and create another game object and call it Timer Controller and attach your script you just created. Drag and drop the timer text inside of the timer text reference slot. Hit play and watch the timer in action. You will see it counting up and when we press is countdown bool in the inspector then it will start counting down. I'm going to refactor the code a bit to write it a bit more clean. This won't reduce checks in any way. In this case, it more increases the checks, but it does look more readable. If it ever does hinder performance in the future, then this can be written a lot better with even being called without being inside of the update method. We can see that we are duplicating code twice with minutes and seconds, and there is no real reason to cache it as a variable. It was just nice to see it change in the inspector for debugging and testing. Copy and paste minutes and seconds outside of the if statement and delete them from the if statement. Declare them as int variables inside of the update method and delete them as local variables of the class as we only want them defined in the update method. We are not done yet. Inside of the mathf.floor to end, we want to still have the same type of check we had above. To write this all in one line, we do it like the following. int minutes equal mathf.floor to end and then pass in is countdown with an question mark, which is a if and else statement. And if it is countdown, then we are going to write countdown time divide by 60f Else, with a colon, we say time counter divide by 60f. And now for the next line, we will write in seconds equal mathf.floor to end, and then do the same as above is countdown question mark. And if it's true, then countdown timer minus minutes times 60. Else, with the colon, time counter minus minutes times 60. Now the code is a lot more compact and easier to read. I hope this assisted you in creating your very own digital timer in Unity. Stay tuned for more Unity game development tutorials by subscribing and tuning in for the next episode. Cheers.